Hello all, welcome back to our lecture series. Today we'll be talking about cycloalkanes, nomenclature and isomerism. Let us take it up from there immediately. Uh, I have a quote for you. It's just a food for thought. I'm not going to say anything about it. It says, age wrinkles the body, quitting wrinkles the soul. This quote was by Douglas MacArthur. Let us look at our learning objectives. Today, at the end of this class, we tend to achieve these two main objectives. Number one, we're going to be using IOPAC to name cycloalkanes and draw their structural formulas. And then, secondly, we're going to name and draw the structural formulas of the geometric isomers of cycloalkanes. So we're going to be taking our lesson on isomerism to a little bit further on different and a different kind of isomerism, which does not have to do with the bonding patterns now, but with more or less the arrangement of the atoms in space so that is those are the two things we're going to be taking away from this lecture let's take it off immediately cyclo what are cycloalkanes cycloalkanes are alkanes in which the carbon forms a ring you know what a ring is a ring has to be closed so if you have a ring this is what we call a ring so the what it is basically telling you gonna, it's going to be closed it's not open it's not an open chain as it were it's going to be a closed chain so what that simply means okay now it doesn't really look like a normal round ring it's more or less like a polygon so most of them look like polygons you know yeah but though although it starts by it start by the smallest one what the propane cyclopropane so cyclopropane will be when you have three carbons that are joined together of course, their general formula is CNH2N. So what it means, where N is the number of carbon. If you if you say 3, 2 times 3 will give you 6. That's why we have C3H6 as cyclopropane. Remember, prop means 3. Don't forget. Prop simply means 3 in the root name. So if, if you satisfy this, make sure that this carbon has this normal four bonds. That will result to 6 hydrogens. And that is why we have this formula. So see, this is the simplest one. This is our what? Cyclopropane. That's what we have here. So like I said, this is the general formula. And cyclopropane is the simplest member. Now, we're going to go quickly into the nomenclature. Now, how do we name them? The nomenclature of cycloalkanes that does not have any attachment, if they're not attached to anything, right? We we'll just put a cyclo and put the name of the alkane. Just like in this one. This is propane. So we're going to put the name of our can. It's going to be cyclopropane, right? We put cyclo. So if it's butane, it's going to be cyclobutane. If it is hexane, cyclohexane. If it is pentane, cyclopentane. That's how we name them. So they put the prefix cyclo is, is put before the arcane name. However, when there are substitution, when it is, when it has attachment, say when substituted or attached, when it has attachment, let me write down there. when it has attachment how do you name them they are named by telling us the position of what of the attachment if it's a metal group you, you tell us the position however if the cycloalkane has only one attachment only a single attachment you do not need to say or specify the numbering because all the atoms are seen to be equivalent let me give you an example now this is cyclo pentane right this is cyclopentane ordinarily this is cyclopentane now if cyclopentane has one attachment let me show you this now if there's an attachment this is a metal group okay i can just make it this ordinarily you start counting your numbering from this right one two three four five that's why it is cyclopentane but see what happens because this is the only thing you have there it can be in any of them and any one you put it it becomes that carbon, if I move this thing to this point, it becomes the number number one carbon. It must be counted from there. So all these attachments for only one substitution are all equivalent. Therefore, you don't need to say one cyclopentane. What do you just say? No, you don't need to say one methyl. You just say methyl cycl. So this is gonna be methyl cyclopentane. You don't need to say one methyl cyclopentane. Although some other authors or text might still put one there. When my students give me this in exam, I usually grade it as well. So if, if someone says one 
methyl cyclopentane. It still means something to this, but no need putting it because we know it's already located in carbon of one. But when it has more than two attachments, you have to specify the numbering of both of the attachments. All right, let's see the normal cycloalkanes without attachment, without branching. When it is carbon is three here, look at it, one, two, three, is cyclopropane. This is the shortcut. We call this the geometric figure. Usually this skeletal structure is the geometric, just like you do in mass, geometry. This is the geometric figure. Cyclobutane is four, just like it's a square. Uh, if you don't understand a square, you can say a rectangle. That's what we have here. This is cyclopentane. Yeah, so just a polygon, pentane. Cyclohexane, the same thing here. So, like I said, this is a triangle. This is a rectangle. This is a pentagon. This is a hexagon. So they're just named from that structure, from that geometric structure. So what you need to know is just put A and E in that, or just put exactly the name of the arcanes. You see, all this place is exactly the name. Okay, well, let, me, let me take this away actually. Yeah, this is exactly the same name of the arcane without any change at all. Without any change. Just what you need to do is to put the word cyclo to name. That. However, when they have attachment now, more than two attachments, something changes. Let's see. So when there are two or more groups attached to the cyclo again, the ring numbering begins with the first carbon attached alphabetically. Now, when there are two things attached, we have to make it, like I told you, it becomes a tie. How do you break the tie? You break the tie with alphabet. Now, so what does that mean? You're going to give, you're going to start numbering from the one that the alphabet comes first. And then you number the rest in a direction that gives other ones the lowest numbering. Let's take this as an example. Now, let's look at this as a very good example. We will look at this. Let's number first. Now, I'm going to number with my green color. Let's see. Now, this is metal group right we know that this is ethyl group ethyl so which one comes first remember metal is m ethyl is e so ordinary e comes first so we're going to start numbering numbering from e so if i want a number now this is going to be my one now i can number like this one two three four five this is a uh, cyclopentane at least the ring is cyclopentane i can also number this way okay let me show you another numbering you can also number this way let's see let me use this if you number this way from here again one this becomes two three four five no, that's not correct number what did i do okay let's do it well so this is should put the number as well so i'll let's start from here so this is one this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, and this will be five. Now, let's see. Now, remember, I said the first thing first. We've done the first thing. We started numbering from the one that is E, which is ethyl. However, the numbering has to end in such a way that the other attachment will get the lowest number. If you count from here, if you start counting from here, ethyl is one, metal is three from the blue number. Now, if you come from here, ethyl is one, but this becomes number four. I'm not going to go through the yellow numbering. So what do I do? I'm going to take away all my yellow numbering. Let me take them away. I'm going to take away my yellow numbering. That's a wrong numbering. I'm going to take it away. I'm going to focus on the blue numbering because that is what gives me the right number. Now to name it, what do I do? I have to say, because there are two things attached, ethyl and metal. I have to locate the position of both of them. So what will be the name of this compound? So the name of this compound is going to be, I start from this, it's going to be one... One ethyl, ethyl is in one. I remember, the, each letter and number will be separated by a hyphen or a slash. Now, this is carbon number three. Three metal. What is the ring? Remember, this is cyclopentane. That is how we name it. All right. Always feel free to pause this video, practice this yourself, and always come. And do them again. That helps a lot. Now, this question, let's do the first reflection. It says, represent the cycloalkane by a geometric figure. Remember what I told you? The shortcut is the geometric figure. 
So what's the geometric figure of this? Let's do it. Just the shortcut. The geometric figure of this is going to be, to solve the problem, it's just a triangle. Pro Cyclopropane is a triangle. However, we need to put the metric group here, which is a shortcut. What do we do? We just put this. So this is how we solve this problem. And of course, I didn't ask you to, oh, I say and name it. Okay, let's name it. So it's going to be, remember, there's only one attachment. We don't need to say where it, where it is. So we're just going to say metal cyclopropane. Metal cyclopropane. It's a cyclopropane. It has a metal group in one of the carbons. That is how we do this problem. Let's take it off from them. Now let's go to the second reflection. The second reflection question here says, what is the name of this compound? Let's see. Again, let's apply those rules now. What are the two attachments? There is metal and there is third booty. Remember that. Don't forget this is third booty. Okay. Although let's do this. Third butyl. And of course this is metal. Two attachments. Now remember, which one comes first? Metal is M. Third bottle is it T or B? Remember what I told you. The hyphen here makes this a prefix. So the B is what we're counting. So third bottle, third butyl, we're counting it as what? B. So B is going to come first before M. So what would we number? I take a different call. Now if I number from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, we know this is a cyclohexane. This gives you six. So from here, we have it at one and four. If I count from here again, let's see. If I count with another color, one, two, three, four. Oh, so anywhere I count from gives me one and four. So I'm going to remove the second number. So whichever direction I want gives me one and four. So I'm going to use one and four. So the name of this will automatically be, since I'm starting counting from here, so it's going to be one, that butyl, Hyphen four metal. Oh, it's not going to complete, so I'm going to finish it here. Cyclohexane. We'll now look for the option. It is this one third butyl, four methyl cyclohexane. This option becomes the correct one. That is how we solve this problem. We we'll now go to the next one. Now let's talk about isomerism in cycloalkane. I told you. They don't undergo structural isomerism, but they have another... No, okay, no, they do undergo structural isomerism and an additional type of isomerism, which we call stereoisomerism. And a type of stereo isomerism that occurs here, we call it geometric isomerism because it looks like it's a result of the geometry of the molecule. So now, see, let's start from here. Remember, when we talked about isomerism or conformation of arcanes, we said the carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bond can easily rotate in open chain arcanes, causing it to have different conformations. But different conformations represent the same compound. In this case, something is happening. The free rotation is not possible because of it has a cyclic ring. Remember, these rings, if I have something like this, this is a cyclic ring. It cannot rotate easily. Instead, what happens? It bends. You can bend the ring or poke it. The ring structure allows for a little bit of bending and pokering. Now that takes us to a type of isomerism we call the stereoisomerism. Stereoisomerism is the existence of a compound with the same structural formula but different arrangement of atoms in space. We call it spatial arrangement. So now the atoms can be arranged different in space and that brings up a different molecule, makes the atom different from the other isom. Now the type of stereoisomer we're going to be looking at here is called the geometric isomerism or the cis and trans isomerism it is a type of stereoisomerism so what happens here now molecules that cannot rotate around the carbon to carbon single bond or even carbon to carbon double bond but we're going to talk about that later but for now let's focus on cyclohexanes will differ in their three dimensional arrangement of atoms in space now what happens before this to occur the cycloarchane it does not occur in normal cycloarchane the cycloarchane must have at least two attachments are two different carbons. Now, if the two groups are placed on one side, we say it is a cis isomerism. If they are placed on opposite side, on different side, we say they are, like I said, let me come back. If they are placed on the same side, we say they are cis 
isomerism. If they are placed on opposite side, we say it is trans isomerism. What do I mean? Okay, let me give you an example. So if I have, assuming I have, this is cyclobutane, and I have an attachment. Okay, I have A. Oh, let me give some space there. Now, okay, let me come here. Now, this is cyclobutane. One, two, three, four. It has two attachments. Let's say there's an attachment A here. There's an attachment A. Look at this now. This A is placed on the same side. Look at it. This is on the same side. When it is on the same side, this type of isomerism, we call it what? The C's. Because this and this is placed on the same side. What about when it is placed on different side? Let's see. If it is placed on different side, again, let me draw my cycle of this. Now, one of them is placed here, and the other one is placed, let's say, okay, if I put this, okay, let me just put it this way. It's placed, let's say, A. Now, it is on different sides. You can also put it inside here, but if I put it inside there, it's going to be small, but it's fine. So if I put it here, oh, let me do it that way. So that's usually the common way to present. Okay, let me assume that the A is on another side. So this A means it's an opposite side of the plane. Just don't get yourself confused about that. I still don't feel good because it doesn't look... I know it's my drawing, but... Okay, let me still put it this way. Okay. Now, if you look at that now, the, the attachment A is placed on opposite side or different side. This type of isomerism is what I will call what? Trans. Because this attachment is placed on different sides of the... And remember, because this attachment of A is in two different carbons. Remember, there's a carbon here. There's a carbon here. Two different carbons. That is the caveat. It must be placed on... If, it's placed, if this A is placed on the same carbon... Okay, let's see. If we have something like this, whereby the A is placed here and A is placed here. This type of molecule cannot exhibit, this one cannot exhibit cis or trans isomerism. It can only exhibit structural isomerism. Let's now take a very good example. Okay, like what I told you, the carbon to carbon single bond in a normal unbranched alkane, just in open chain, let's put the open chain ones, open chain, alkanes have free rotation around them, making them to exist in different conformations. Now, the cycloalkane cannot. There is no free rotation around here. So this is a cycloalkane. There's no free rotation. So here, there is only bending. Only bending or pore current around this. So because it cannot rotate freely as this. So here, free rotation is very possible. Here, free rotation is not possible. What it does is that it bends or it pokers. That's exactly what happens. So now, let's take a very good example. Let's look at geometric isomers of 1,2-dimethylcyclopentane. This is 1,2-cyclopentane. Now, look at this. Remember, if you count this, we count this, let's count from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you count this as well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is cyclopentane. This cyclopentane has attachment in carbon number one and two of the methyl group. Now look at this. In the first one, the methyl group is placed on different side. Here is placed here. This one is placed here. It's in opposite side. Now, when they're in opposite side, it, or what exists is what we call the trans because they're in opposite side. So remember, if one and, without adding trans, if one and name this, we're going to name it as what? One, two. If, if you remove this, and one of them, this is one, two, dimethyl, this dimethyl cyclopentane. But because it's on opposite side, you have to put the trans with a slash or a hyphen before naming the compound. Now, again, remember here, both of these attachments are on different side, or you can say opposite side, it doesn't matter. Now, again, alternatively, if you don't want to draw it this way, you can draw it by using what we call the thick wedge and the dash line. So the use of the thick wedge and the dash line represent attachment in different sides. When you use the thick wedge and the dash at the same time, you are telling us that that molecule is a trans isomer. So the use, let me just write it, the use of thick wedge 
and dash lines represent attachment at different sides. Sides. And the attachment on different side is called what? That becomes a trans isom. So if you look at this here, I used either you do it this way using a normal line, single lines, or you use a tick one and a dash to say your thing. Then what about this one? Look at this one again. This is another one. This is they are located on the same side. Look at it on the same side. Now when they are located on the same side. It is cis isomer. So here again, it is one two dimethylcyclopentane, but because it's on the same side, it becomes a cis. Now this compound now and this compound are two different things, and we have different chemical and physical properties. Now again, how do you now represent using the tick word? Remember, this means on the same side. The same side. Let me use my red. This means the same sides. That you have the attachment on the same sides. And remember again, it must be on two different carbons in the molecule. Now, when it is the same side, what does it represent? So you use either, so the use of either, you can use either the thick wedge, two thick wedges, or dash wedges, dash lines or dashes, you use the thick wedges or dashes to represent attachment. On the same side. That's exactly what I post here. So it is attachment on the same side. And when this happens, if it's on the same side, what type of isomerism do we have? We have a C's isomer. So here I use both thick wedges on the same side, representing the C's, C's isomer of this one. So this is how you do this. We're going to get this hammered in better by doing some problems in the next few pages. Now look at it. It says, name and draw the structural formulas. For all the isomers of dimethyl cyclobutane. It says indicate which ones are geometric isomers and which ones are not. So we want to remember the caveat, the condition for this to occur is that the attachment has to be what? On different carbons. So here we have diamond. It did not give us the number because it wants you to think and make them up. So if you draw a cycle, okay, let's start by drawing this. If you draw this. Dimethyl cycle. I'm going to use my red. If you draw, it says dimethyl means it has two methyl group attached. Now let's start. Now it can be attached. Methyl group can be attached in the same. Oh, I did not even change color. Okay, let me keep using green. Methyl group can be attached on one carbon. Remember here now. This is going to. If you want to name this now, this is going to be. This this will be carbon number one, two, three, four. So whichever one you want to name. So this, if it is attached on this, this cannot, this particular isomer, this particular structure cannot exhibit. Remember this two, three, four. Cannot exhibit geometric isomerism at all. So, and what is the name? The name of this is attached at carbon number one. So it's going to be one, one, because in carbon number one, dimethyl, Cyclobutane. That's what we have here. So, because this metal group is attached on one side, it cannot exhibit geometric isom. Now, what are we going to do? Let's try to see if we can form more isomers from this. I go back to this screen. So, now if I get this one, let me draw another one. What if when I attach it in, in two different carbons there? Now, I can have an attachment here, an attachment here now. It still become diametric. Let's see. So, if I have an attachment here, and put them with just the wedge. You know what's going to happen? I have CH3 here. I have CH3 here. Remember again, this is still going to be 
this is not gonna be let me number it. so this is gonna be one two three four so this is gonna be what this is gonna be one two dimethyl cyclobutane but something is happening remember since it's on the same side it's gonna be a cis isomer so i'm gonna draw the trans of it, this one immediately see if i'm gonna draw the trans look at what the trans will look like again is in one and two i'm gonna use this and put ch3 whereas this one i'm gonna use my dash line and put ch3 so this is this See, this is the trans. So let's name it. To name it now, this is going to be, it's the same thing. It's still the same dimethyl cyclobutane, but it's going to be C's 1, 2. Remember, it's in 1 and 2. Dimethyl cyclobutane. That's what we have here. C's 1, 2 dimethyl cyclobutane. Because this, we did, because I used just wedges meaning this metal group are attached on the same side when they're in opposite side like here what am i going to do this is another isomer so this is going to be trans one comma two di metal cyclobutane again this is the geometric isomer because they're placed on so what it says indicate so one where this is let me use a different color then let me use blue so this this now and this this is a geometric isomer isomer and this is also geometric isomer because the both are season but it's not done let's see if we can make up another one again now remember we've placed it in one and one we placed it in one and two what if you place it in one and three yeah that's possible you can if you move this to this now it can be one two three and no, if you place this if you remove one of this and place it at this point now so you can count one two three you can also count one two three so we can have one three again so let's go i'm going to go to the next page to finish up this if i go to the next page to finish it up now i'm going to use my green again i'm going to have again i'm going to draw this like i said now i want to place it in one and three let me make this clear okay so if i place one metal group here remember the other one i placed it here now i want to place it here if i place it here if you come from here let's see if you come from here one two three one two three anywhere you can't is one two three one two three and this is the only one you can do because if you place it here again because one two we did one two already so it's going to be this so now we have another geometric isomer what are you going to call this this is one three so now since so I, I use the same wedge right on it means on the same side so this is going to be i'm going to use my red c's c's one comma three dimethyl cyclobutane that's what we have here one three then i'm good this one is going to have its geometric isomer its geometric isomer is going to be this is going to be the C. So here, I'm going to still leave this one as thick one. Put my search tray. I'm going to use this one as well. That's my dash. Put my search tray. Therefore, what's the name of this? Since they are attached on different sides because of the wedge and the dash, I'm going to call it trans one. This is in one, two, three. Remember, one, three, dimethyl cyclobutane again remember it is one two three four it's four that's all and again remember these two this is a geometric isomer this this is a geometric isomer and this is a geometric isomer as well let me use a different goal so this is both of these guys okay both of them are geometric isomers as well so if you find out in drawing the structure of this let's go back to the first one we have one structural isomer and one two three four geometric isomers so this is exactly how you do this problem all right we now go to the next problem and the next problem it says what is the name 
of the structure below. Let's try to name the structure below. Let's count. Let's apply our normal rules of nomenclature again. So it's going to be, let's count. This is two bromines. If you count from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is cyclohexane. If you come from here, one, two, three, four. If you come from here to one, two, three, four, one, four from both sides. So this is going to be, since we have wedges, thick wedges on both sides. So what is it going to be? It's going to be, we're going to say one, no, I'm going to, since the wedges is going to be C's, one comma four is located in one and four. This is this. One and four. Di is two of them. Dibromo cyclo. Exam. That's what we, we got there. I'm gonna change this. My E doesn't look like E. It might be beautiful. No. Good. So that is it. We got it. So then. So now we look for where this is. Let's look for it. C's. Oh, the first one. Fortunately for us, C's one four dibromo cyclo hexane. This becomes. The answer and then go to the next one feel free to pause this a little bit try out this yourself and come back to them okay let me pause for like 30 seconds and see if you can do it yourself okay let's get back to it you should have done something by now Okay, let's see this one. It says, name this one. In exams, most times, what I try to let students know is that I try to make make the question very specific by saying, include trans, include cis or trans in naming it. I do that a lot. At times when I don't put it, if, if I don't put it and students give me the general name without telling me the geometric assignment, I don't really take away points. But most times, if I need it, I'll say, include it as cis or trans. But when once you see this, just know that I want those emphasis. Let's see. Let's number this. Now, how do we number? Again, we're going to see two attachments. This is metal. This is what? One, two, three. Remember, this is isopropyl. Again, metal is M. Isopropyl is I. So I will have to confess. So we have to start numbering from this. So if you want to number from this, we're going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see, this is cyclooctane. It is eight. It's, it's, there's cyclone on air, a cyclodecan. So this is it. Now, see, if you had counted from here, let's say, okay, let's say I, you counted from one, no? One, two, three, four. One, two. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. You see what happened there? Now you are giving this number seven. This numbering with the yellow color is not gonna work because you want to give it the lowest numbering. So what do I do? I'm gonna take them away. Now I'm taking this time to do this so that you guys will be really acquainted with the nomenclature. Okay, let's now do it. What's it gonna be? Since I, I took away that, I'm gonna use one three, and this comes first. So it's gonna be now. See, look at here is a, a dash. Here is a wedge. It's a trans isomer. So we're going to say trans one isopropyl one isopropyl three metal cyclo cyclo octane. This becomes the name of this compound it is let's look at it again this is trans and then one isopropyl three methyl cyclo octane our numbering and our nomenclature is correct then we go to the last but not the least part of the slide and the last problem it says draw the structure of cis one bromo two methyl cyclo pentane now, again, like I did when we did the, for the alkanes, for the open chain alkanes, look, look at what you do first. Try to, first of all, draw the longest chain. In this case, the longest chain, we don't have a longest chain, we have the, the ring, the longest ring, kind of, if you want to say. So, you, we're going to, first of all, draw 
the cyclopentane. 10. Cyclopentane 10 means 5. So what am I going to do? I'm going to say this is 5. So you can number it yourself. It doesn't matter. You can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is cyclopentane. But now it says 1 bromo. Bromine comes before methyl, which is true. So 1 bromo. What am I going to do? I'm going to put, you can start from here. I can put my 1 here. My bromine. Wait. So I'm going to just keep using the green. So if this is my bromine, one bromo to two methyl that means methyl group need to be here but since it is c's i'm still going to use the same tqh so it's going to be since it c's i'm going to use tqh so methyl group is going to be this or you can just put your methyl group it doesn't matter even if you put the dash without it you know it's there. so this becomes c's one bromo two methyl cyclo Pentane. Or you can draw it this way. Remember again. Okay, let me use a different color now. You can draw it this way. If you can draw it this way by saying your bromine is here. This becomes your one now. And then your metal is here on the same side. Remember, this is your one, two, three, four, five. Any one you give me in exam, they are okay. I'm gonna take any of them, either this or this. And having said that, we've come to the end of this lecture. Thank you once again for listening. Bye.